Come on, maestro! Hit it! It was an ordinary day in the ancient city of Lin Tian. The sun shone brightly, birds soared in the sky, and our protagonist leisurely sat on a park bench. As he slowly opened his eyes, the entire world transformed. Something supernatural began to rip through the sky, buildings erupted into flames, and terror was written across the faces of everyone present. It was sheer hell. Pandemonium broke out as people screamed, A monster! That's a monster! Run! Shouts echoed from all directions as the crowd desperately sought salvation. However, our protagonist remained seated in shock, paralyzed amidst the chaos. He was stunned, staring at the monster that was now visible to all. It was the day the heavens opened, bringing devastation in the form of unspeakable horrors that would haunt dreams. The fearsome creature was laying waste to the city. Fire ravaged everything in its path, leaving only destruction behind. The young man was both horrified and flabbergasted by the scene before him. His phone rang, displaying the caller ID, Xiao Shui Babe. In that moment, disaster spread death and despair, leaving no one safe. His only thought was, I can't die here. Today is the day I will see my girlfriend again after three years. Of all days, it was this one that everything fell apart. His plans were obliterated along with the city. Their anticipation was shattered just like the bodies of innocent civilians as the fire consumed their flesh and turned their bones to ash. Regret was the thing on his mind. I had so many questions for her, but now it seems impossible, he mused. Everything he was and everything he had hoped for had disintegrated into nothingness, rendered meaningless. It seemed like he was destined to die there in terror and pain. Still, he reached for his ringing phone. He reflected that if this chaos hadn't occurred on that fateful day, he would be living an idyllic life, a fairy tale ending with the woman of his dreams. His charred body lay scattered near the water. It's tragic that I'll never see her again, he thought one last time. As his hand touched the water, the coolness provided a fleeting sense of relief before he departed. In the final moment before his last breath, a beam of light emanated from his hand. The world had already forgotten when it all began. Aliens had covertly invaded Earth, with strange occurrences becoming increasingly frequent. Initially, people dismissed these events as rumors, hoaxes or scams until they experienced the unexplainable themselves. In 1934, the corpse of a giant dragon plummeted from the sky into the northern seas of Dongguan, capsizing fishing boats along the coast. By the next day, the body had vanished without a trace. In 1947, witnesses reported a monster resembling a giant crustacean in the western seas of Melo, with over 100 witnesses and 15 victims. In 2020, an aquatic creature was discovered in the southeast region of Longo under a red moonlit sky. All these events shared a common trait. They disappeared during the night as if they had never existed. Incidents resulting in fatalities were categorized and broadly labeled as man-made disasters. People began to take notice. Some speculated about what truly caused the ancient city of Lin Tian to be destroyed overnight. Out of fear of being the next victims, people even turned to religion and prayer. Our protagonist began to regain consciousness, slowly becoming aware of a loud, blue-hued world around him. As his senses sharpened, he started to hear people speaking. Fully opening his eyes, he recognized his surroundings, noticing numerous oxygen bubbles above him and water covering the ground. Glancing down, he was startled to find fins where his hands should have been. It took him a moment to grasp the gravity of the situation, but he soon widened his eyes in horror and exclaimed, What? No way! I've turned into a fish! What is happening? After his initial panic, he spotted a mirror. Almost as if beckoning him, he approached it to see his own reflection. With a look of dismay, he muttered, I'm done for. I'm just a tiny fish. A carp. He observed his red scales, chubby body, and a mysterious red gem on his forehead. Lost in thought about his predicament, he suddenly noticed a strange movement in the environment. This new reality made him ponder, shouldn't I be dead? I remember seeing that giant monster before dying. Swimming in circles, he wondered about the fate of his girl Xiao Shui and that monster. What could have happened to it? Filled with questions, he realized that the only way to find answers was to explore his surroundings, despite the limitations of his current form. Just as he was considering his next move, a shiver ran down his spine. Turning slowly, he found himself face to face with an army of crabs. 
Their sharp claws and menacing stares caused him to panic and shout, Help me! Attempting to swim away with his small fins, he found himself surrounded by these fearsome creatures who eyed him like a tasty snack. The chase continued until he reached a dead end. From above, he saw the shadow of something more imposing approaching. A giant fish with blue scales and sharp teeth lunged at the crabs, scattering them like insects. But the threat was far from over. Another, even larger shadow loomed over the blue-scaled fish and swallowed it whole without hesitation. This predator, a purple beast, made our protagonist seem like a mere fry in the sea. By a stroke of luck, the protagonist found a rusted steel mailbox embedded in the ground and didn't hesitate to hide inside it. The size was perfect for a secure hideout. Forget about leaving this place, he thought, trembling in fear. The situation seemed to be deteriorating rapidly for him. In that position, he couldn't even consider leaving the depths. Merely surviving amidst these formidable beasts was an enormous challenge. The terror of being consumed by a larger and more bizarre creature triggered a notification sound in his mind. The invincible leveling system has been successfully activated. Before his eyes, the water started to bubble with a magical light, slowly forming into a shape. As the magical light began to dissipate, it revealed ample breasts covered by a golden clamshell. Her hair was a deeper blue than the ocean, and her limbs more splendid than the most exquisite pearls. Her upper body resembled that of a true goddess, while her lower part transformed into a tail adorned with sea creature scales. She was the most beautiful mermaid he had ever seen. The small fish showed a blank expression, silently pondering what she could be. The blue mermaid did not respond with words. Instead, she grabbed him by the small red fin and darted away at the speed of sound. The solitary journey nearly cost the poor boy his life due to the sheer pressure and speed. They moved through abundant marine life with a single destination in mind. The benevolent Blue Mermaid led the little carp to a safer place, away from the terrifying giant beasts known as shallow water. Now, he asked with a bored expression, who are you? They swam together as he repeatedly said, you, you. Then she introduced herself. I am your system, but let's be real. Let's call her a more fitting name, the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid opened the status window for our protagonist, revealing his name as Lin Hao. He was a level one black carp, measuring three centimeters in length and weighing 0.4 G with a combat power of 0.1. He had no skills, no divine power, no evolution points, no life, no future, and no girlfriend. Bro was cooked. Still taken aback by all this new information, he asked, what do I need to do to increase my level? The solution was straightforward. She indicated a loose crumb in the water and said, you just need to eat. Following her advice, he opened his mouth and consumed the crumb. This act earned him 0.1 evolution point, showing that his evolution was solely dependent on eating. Looking at the embodiment of his system with determination, Lin began to devour crumbs that continuously fell from above in a feeding frenzy. The surface of the water appeared calm and serene under the gentle night sky, but beneath, Lin had satisfied his ravenous appetite, his stomach slightly bulging from overeating. Despite his efforts, the latest session had only yielded five evolution points. The Blue Mermaid lounged casually on the lake bed, attentively observing his every move. Lin began to question whether he was being tricked. Was it fair to gain just a few evolution points after so much effort? After a brief pause to sate his hunger, other unsuspecting fish joined in on the feast. Even though he was already full, Lin couldn't let these fish waste the valuable nutrients. He swam vigorously, twisting and turning to consume every crumb voraciously. Even if his maneuvers only netted him half a point of evolution, he deemed it worth the effort. Reflecting on the situation, he wondered, but who was feeding the fish in the middle of the night? The answer might have been closer to his heart than he realized. It was a woman, reminiscing while gazing at a locket that contained a photo of herself and a young man who resembled Lin before he had fins and scales. This woman was his beloved Xiao Shu. She was still heartbroken over the events that had taken her boyfriend's life just when they were about to reunite. As tears blurred her glasses, she remembered his last promise. You said you would wait for me, Lin Hao. Staying near the water's surface out of curiosity, Lin heard his name spoken by the woman. Initially, he thought her mourning husband's name might be the same as his. In her distress, the locket slipped from her grasp. 
Panicking as she watched her lover's last memento fall, she tried to catch it, but gravity had already taken its toll. The locket was on the verge of plunging into the water. All the fish, including Lin, retreated in fear of the approaching metal. This mishap intensified Xiao Xue's distress, causing her to cry even more, but there was no time to dwell on sorrow. A man approached her, addressing her as Captain Luo. It appeared they had urgent matters to attend to. She quickly wiped her tears and adopted a serious tone. Turning to the man, she followed him, leaving behind a note and a hopeful thought. She wished Lin would wait for her as she planned to find him once everything was over. Meanwhile, the locket continued to sink deeper into the water and a small carp saw the photo inside it. It depicted him and his beloved Xiao Xue. Realizing that the person who dropped the locket and fed the fish was his girl, Lin swam with all his might. He silently pleaded for her not to act recklessly and to wait for him. When he reached the surface, he said, I'm here, Xiao Xue. It's me, Lin Hao. But fate intervened once more. The woman had already left, leaving him alone again. So close yet so distant, the little fish felt more desolate than ever. Tears streamed down his face as he lamented, not being able to speak is so difficult, Xiao Xue. How can I move on without you? Despite her departure, the locket continued to sink into the shallow waters. Lin watched the precious memento fall deeper and knew he had to retrieve it at any cost. However, he suddenly remembered how weak he was, which was incredibly frustrating. He could only question why fate always seemed to conspire against them, why they always just missed each other. Determined not to give up, he wiped away his tears and resolved to overcome the challenge. He would do everything in his power to get out of the water, hoping that by then, Xiao Shue would still be waiting for him. Lin plunged back into the shallow waters. The surface quickly regained its tranquil stillness, yet nearby, all the fish noticed a small, determined fish voraciously consuming anything that offered nutrition. Lin transitioned from feeding on breadcrumbs to preying on smaller fish and crustaceans, progressing rapidly. A blue mermaid observed quietly as he feasted. With her experience as the system's embodiment, she knew that the blessed often faced solitude in their early days. This was her first time seeing a fish so diligently striving to grow stronger from the beginning. Lin moved so swiftly that another notification resonated in his mind, informing him that he had met the conditions for evolution. He could evolve immediately. Although he was unsure of what this evolution entailed, the notification required a simple answer, yes or no. Naturally, the logical choice was yes. As he embraced his hard-earned progress, a magical light glowed under his tail, initiating a profound transformation in his small body. When he asked about the potential of evolution, the Blue Mermaid responded that anything was possible. The evolution process took a significant amount of time, likely the entire night, causing Lin to lose consciousness amid the changes. Upon awakening, he felt vastly different. Miss Blue Mermaid had watched over him throughout the evolution, ensuring everything went smoothly. He was somewhat surprised to see her inquisitive gaze when he awoke. She was puzzled by how long Lin took to evolve, given that this was just his first evolution. Lin was uncertain as well, but he noticed his body was longer and his scales were thicker. He was no longer a plump little fish. He now possessed a touch of splendor. Miss Blue Mermaid inquired about which part of his body had grown longer, and with a bashful expression, he simply replied, Well, I'm a fish. What do you think? Examining his status window, he saw that he had reached level three. His body now measured 45 centimeters in length and weighed 4 kilograms, with a combat power of 1.2. He had also acquired the abilities Steel Tail and Steel Scale Armor. Although he still lacked supernatural powers, his evolution threshold had increased to 200 points. The most notable change was the acquisition of these two new abilities. Lin was surprised by this development. The Blue Mermaid explained, the scales become as hard as steel for three seconds, but there's a cooldown of 10 seconds. A shield every 10 seconds appeared to be highly formidable. As they debated the abilities, a disturbance erupted nearby. It was the classic rule of nature, survival of the fittest, and those who perished were consumed. This time, a gigantic fish succumbed to an alliance of various marine creatures. They voraciously devoured the lifeless creature. Although it was a grisly sight, Lin viewed it as a chance to experiment with a few things. The first fish that sensed his imminent approach quickly realized that the transformed Lin spelled trouble. 
This notion was swiftly confirmed as the evolved fish struck two larger ones with his tail, sending them flying. He had transitioned from easy prey to a fish capable of defending himself against other predators. However, Lin wasn't finished yet. While others were preoccupied with scavenging the large dying fish, the carpenter was delivering blows left and right without opposition. It seemed as though felling these opponents with a single strike might make him overconfident until a massive beast with sharp fangs emerged, intent on making him its next meal. But Lin wasn't going down without a fight. He turned with unwavering confidence, his eyes reflecting calm assurance. This was the perfect moment to test his other ability, the one that granted him a powerful shield every ten seconds. His body emitted a bright glow, indicating virtually impervious scales. The crafty predator that attempted to ambush him would need dental repairs for its broken teeth. In just one day, Lin had already achieved notable strength gains. He was quite satisfied with his newfound dominance in the shallow waters. The Blue Mermaid began assigning him tasks. His common task was to consume 100 black shell shrimps, with the reward being enhanced night vision. The more challenging task was to devour a mutant creature, with the reward being a random ability. With the existence of achievable missions, he couldn't help but wonder what awaited at the end of this evolutionary path. She mentioned that the rewards for completing these missions could be much more impressive. Contemplating the potential of these rewards, he eagerly asked, Can you make me human again? The Blue Mermaid reiterated what she had always said. With the system in place, anything was virtually possible. These words gave Lin renewed hope, as it was technically feasible for him to become human once more. His priority was to retrieve the symbol of his and Xiao Shui's love, the pocket watch at the bottom of the lake. But returning to the depths filled with lurking dangers would be an immense challenge. Numerous creatures capable of easily killing him were hidden everywhere. The Blue Mermaid sternly warned him that venturing into the deep water in his current state would be nearly suicidal, and he would almost certainly perish. But Lin didn't heed the warning. He wanted some time alone. After a while, he managed to avoid immediate threats, reaching the deep bottom and hiding behind some algae. It was now or never. A golden opportunity had presented itself as all the large fish temporarily scattered away from the pocket watch. He advanced cautiously toward the object, trying his best to avoid detection by passing predators. As he got closer to the pocket watch, his mind was solely focused on his beloved Xiao Shui. He was so intent on retrieving what was rightfully his that he failed to notice a glaring flaw in his stealthy approach. The large fish had dispersed because they feared the enormous hunter lurking in the area. Lin froze upon seeing the monstrous scale of the creature before him. He couldn't help but feel the same sense of dread as when he was in the ancient city of Lin Tian. The Blue Mermaid had to rescue him from that dire situation, reprimanding Lin for recklessly diving into danger without a proper plan or any forethought. He looked like a child being chastised. He felt so helpless, unable even to retrieve something so crucial to him. For some reason, his mind wandered back to his past life with his beloved. In those days, he was constantly engrossed in work, but he was happy living with the love of his life. She always adored the way he looked when he was deeply focused. Occasionally, she would lovingly interrupt him, claiming she was hungry or something. He was the kind of guy who would immediately drop everything to ask his girl what she wanted to eat. That particular day was Noodles Day. He prepared a warm and delicious meal for her, even adding an egg on top. Joyfully, he carried the hearty dish to their room, urging Xiao to dig in. When she didn't respond the first time, a sinking feeling began to creep in. Xiao Shui was gone, nowhere to be found. Lin was left standing with a bowl of lovingly made noodle soup in hand. The Blue Mermaid had to snap him out of his daze. He didn't understand why his thoughts went back to that day. Lin just shook his head and assured the system it was nothing. She created a water projection of the pocket watch and declared that if he wanted something, he would have to fight hard for it. All he could do now was work hard to consume and evolve. He touched the water-formed pocket watch and it dissolved into nothingness. It would be some time before he could retrieve the real one. Deep down, he already knew she was right. The direction the Blue Mermaid provided boosted his morale significantly and now he was just eager to eat and evolve. He began experimenting with eating various sea creatures in the shallow waters. First on the list was the massive shell swirling at the bottom of the lake. He swore these things shouldn't be this big, 
To see what worked and what didn't, he shoved the entire shell into his mouth and tried to bite it, but the shell was too tough to crack. It simply wasn't worth the effort right now. Lin immediately spat the shell out in disgust. It was basically inedible, even though there were plenty at the bottom of the lake. He really couldn't devour them for evolution points. It was another source of frustration that further discouraged him from his mission. If he couldn't bite into a shell, then he could only nibble on fish for now. This could take forever to evolve to the next stage. Let's take a break from the underwater scene and shift to the beaches. A heavily equipped vehicle had just arrived on the shore, and from the look of their gear, it was clear they were there for serious business. It was Xiao Shui, also known as Captain Luo, and her subordinates. Their destination was of a supernatural nature. A draconian corpse had washed ashore. Authorities surrounded the area, but no one knew what to do yet, not even the team leader's subordinate. He had never seen anything like it. The creature seemed to have come from the depths, and there were no records of an animal of such size and appearance. It was a curious mystery to some, but not to her. As soon as she saw the beast, she immediately stepped out of the car, ordering all personnel to begin evacuation procedures and maintain a safe distance from the creature. The team captain cautioned, this thing could blow up at any moment. Have you ever heard of whale explosions? There have been instances where whales explode due to excessive gas buildup during decomposition. This is undoubtedly one of the deadliest natural biological phenomena in the world. The same concept could apply to this giant creature stranded on the shore. Xiao quickly put on minimal protective gear and instructed her team to prepare ventilation tubes. Using a standard scalpel, she made an incision in the thick, viscous flesh of the creature. The ventilation tube was then inserted into the cut. With the tubes connected, the risk of the worst-case scenario increased. The person monitoring the creature's condition reported an issue. Despite the ventilation, the scanners were malfunctioning. Realizing the potential danger, the team leader ordered everyone to evacuate the site immediately. Her team was slow to grasp the urgency, so she simplified the orders. Run for your lives. She had to physically drag the scanner operator away from the imminent explosion. As the beast's corpse showed signs of an impending explosion, it erupted in a messy, bloody display of putrid blood, bile and liquefied organs all over the beach. The sight was overwhelming for some, so let's shift our focus to the calm, shallow waters. In these waters, terrifying prawns had made the shallow floors their territory, but this was about to change with the arrival of a new predator. Lin was consuming black shell prawns for one evolution point each. Their flesh was decent, the shells were crunchy, and he earned more evolution points than from fish scraps. As he ate, he noted this. He hunted so many that he unlocked the black shell prawn hunter achievement, earning him a normal treasure chest. Even Miss Blue Mermaid was astonished that Lin had already devoured over 200 of these water creatures. The achievement system allowed him to open the normal chest immediately, which he did. A magical chest appeared in the hands of the Blue Mermaid, and as he opened it, its mystical contents began to envelop Lin Hao. Increased strength, bubble burst, resilient fins, heightened agility, increased critical hits, increased defense, increased stamina, and many other options. The enhancement that stood out most to Lin was the sharp teeth enhancement. It seemed like a valuable skill to invest in. After all, a reward is a reward. The mermaid watched from the shore, and once the selection was finalized, she eagerly encouraged him to reveal his choice. Her eyes sparkled with anticipation. She should be the embodiment of the system, so she should know what he chose, right? However, she explained that the rewards are chosen randomly, and even the system cannot influence these choices. Lin eagerly anticipated the onset of the selected reward. The initial sensation he felt was an intense itch. He swam in circles, trying to alleviate the discomfort, but it was futile. The itch was so severe that he needed something to gnaw on. He spotted a shell on the floor, and remarkably, the shell that had been unbreakable a few hours earlier was now easily crushed in a single bite. Excited, he swam back to Miss Mermaid to demonstrate his new ability. He showed her his teeth and asked for her opinion. Observing his grotesque, overgrown fangs, she avoided commenting directly, stating that such matters were beyond her expertise. Despite the unusual appearance, the enhancement proved extremely useful for hunting. Lin could now effortlessly catch schools of fish. Unfortunately, the most abundant fish, the dark ones, tasted awful. 
He also wondered about his other mission, speculating about the taste of a mutant creature. This led him to question what constituted a mutant creature. Perhaps they were organisms mutated by polluted water. He asked Miss Blue Mermaid, are these missions tailored to my current environment or are they random? The system did not have an answer. If the missions were environment specific, it implied the presence of a mutant creature similar to the one that killed him when he was human. While deep in thought, Lin sensed a hidden presence moving nearby. He quickly turned, but saw nothing. Although he couldn't see the source, a shiver ran up his spine, and he heard human voices above. They planned to release plecofish into the wild, despite knowing it was illegal and harmful. Dozens of leopard pleco or guacari fish were dumped into the peaceful waters from their boat. Lin felt a surge of irritation at the sight of these intruders releasing an invasive species into his home. As the fish began to acclimate, a massive presence from the depths rose toward the surface. This serpentine creature, long enough to stretch from the depths to the surface, was clearly annoyed. Lin's system sounded a threat alert, sensing the approach of a highly dangerous creature, and urged him to prepare for battle. The monster was now high above the water, targeting the fishes that had just entered. Below it, Lin Hao observed with a serious expression, internally debating his next move. He knew escaping this predicament in the small pond would be challenging. Suddenly, another fish, much larger with sharp teeth, joined the fray. It attacked the other fishes, but soon found itself face to face with the giant snake-like monster. Their eyes locked before the snake lunged to bite the shark. Blood was everywhere, indicating the snake's likely victory and suggesting that Lin Hao might benefit from their conflict, much like a fisherman reaping rewards from a battle between burdens and oysters. Unexpectedly, Lin Hao noticed a fish behind him and quickly lunged to eat it in an instant. However, swallowing it proved difficult and it got stuck in his teeth. Despite the inconvenience, he received a notification that the pleco fish earned him 10 evolution points. This both shocked and impressed Lin Hao, as he realized he was gaining significant experience points. His attention then returned to the two colossal monsters, and he saw that the snake had now sliced the shark in half. But then, something chilling happened. The reptilian eyes of the snake locked onto Lin Hao. The creature, menacing and towering over him, made him feel like an ant. He needed to remain calm and avoid panic. On closer inspection, he noticed the snake was wounded. Suddenly, the snake lunged at him with its jaws open, sharp teeth ready to devour him. Luckily, Lin Hao managed to dodge swiftly and hide under some rocks, thinking he was safe there. The snake, looking at him as if questioning his intelligence, wondered why he would hide under rocks with such a large predator after him. The snake then used its tail to smash the ground, causing destruction. Fortunately, its aim was off, missing Lin Hao entirely. Lin inwardly thought to himself that with the plecos fishes still around, the creature would likely leave after losing him. However, as he gazed at the enormous beast with glowing red eyes, a chill ran down his spine. His worries were justified as the snake relentlessly pounded the ground with its attacks, demolishing everything around it. Lin struggled to survive, perplexed by the creature's determination to kill him. He realized that if he wasn't crushed to death and if he could find a way to escape, he might still have a chance. But when the snake's tail slammed into his hiding spot, he was forced to dash out into the open. Now exposed, the snake opened its mouth and used its long tongue to grab Lin. He fought to break free, but recognizing his own weaknesses, he knew he was doomed. He wondered if there was any way to bridge the sheer gap in power. Desperate, he used his skill Mighty Tail Swipe to try and escape, but it wasn't enough. He didn't want to die because Yao Shui was waiting for him. However, his fate seemed to have been set as this gigantic monster isn't thinking about letting him go. Meanwhile, back at Xiao Shui's location, she was still running with the man when suddenly his assistant grabbed her hand and positioned himself protectively in front of her to shield her from the flesh of the monster that had just exploded. After the chaos subsided and the flesh stopped flying everywhere, she opened her eyes and thanked the man respectfully. They then noticed something unusual in the monster's remains, a green object that resembled an egg. Realizing the danger, Xiao Shui quickly instructed her assistant to find any weapon he could and destroy the eggs to prevent them from reaching the ocean. The man understood, and within minutes, soldiers arrived, armed and ready. They handed Xiao Shui a weapon, and together they began shooting at the numerous eggs scattered along the shore. 
Her assistant laughed and praised her for her intelligence and athleticism. Man, our boy needs to become human again ASAP because this guy is trying to riz up his girl. I can't die here. I have to escape. I can't die in a place like this, filled with regrets, Lin kept repeating. The gem on his forehead began to glow as he continued insisting that he had to get out and couldn't die there. As the gem illuminated his surroundings, he realized he was inside the snake's body. He remembered it had a wound on its back. Knowing he was in the snake's stomach, he wondered how he could reach the wound. He knew that if he didn't find a way out quickly, he would be digested. He had a brilliant idea, using his scale armor, which protected him for three seconds, and his razor-sharp teeth, he could locate the snake's wound. After some time of swimming, he saw something green and wondered what it was. Upon closer inspection, he realized it was something healing. Outside, the snake was eating healing herbs, which explained why its wound was healing. Without wasting any time, Lin hardened his scales and with all his might dashed towards the wound, causing the monster indescribable pain. Lin's attack was so powerful that he pierced its flesh and exited its body with immense speed. As he continued swimming, Lin looked back to see the snake glaring at him menacingly with its red eyes. However, knowing it was injured, it retreated into the water. Lin noted that it was fortunate the snake was injured, otherwise he would have died there. He then asked the mermaid how deep the pond was. Seeing it could accommodate such a giant mutant water serpent, he wondered if there was some sort of interdimensional portal at the bottom. The mermaid said it wasn't something she knew, so he had to find out himself by going down there. Rubbing his chin, Lin said that since the serpent had already cleared out the big ones, he would help himself to the smaller plecos. With a menacing expression, looking like a true predator, Lin terrified the fishes. Swimming towards them, he declared he would gladly enjoy nature's gifts. However, after eating them, Lin started crying because, although they gave good experience points, their taste was awful. He received a notification saying he had fulfilled the conditions for evolution and asked if he would like to evolve now. Without waiting any longer, Lin answered, yes. The calm blue water suddenly illuminated with a bright light and a notification appeared showing Lin's stats. His name was now Lin Hao, his race had evolved to a black koi, he was level 4, his body length was 70 centimeters, his weight was 10.1 G, and his combat power was 3.2. He acquired the tearing bite, skull and mighty tail swipe, and steel scale armor abilities. His divine power is the inauspicious dwelling, and his evolution points now stand at 51 out of 50,300. After reviewing all this, Lin pondered what these particular skills entailed. Pointing at more fish nearby, the mermaid instructed him to try the tearing bite skill, which increased his biting strength. After testing it, he was impressed by this passive skill. Looking back at the enormous serpent monster towering over him, Lin sighed. Though pleased that he had grown to 70 centimeters, he was still dwarfed by the snake. Another notification appeared, presenting him with quests. The first normal quest was to devour 100 pleco fish, with the reward being an increase in the sharpness of his teeth. The second normal quest required him to devour 100 apple snails, with the reward being increased toughness of his scales. Finally, the difficult quest was to devour one mutated creature, with the reward being a random skill. Understanding the routine by now, Lin dashed towards the fish and began devouring them with his sharp teeth. However, after biting through one of the fish, he noticed something strange. The fish was hollow inside. Suddenly, a pink-blue worm-like creature emerged from the fish's shell and swiftly dashed towards another fish, aiming for its eye. This alien-like creature, with sharp teeth and a grotesque body, entered the fish through its eye and started killing it from the inside while Lin watched nervously. His shock and confusion were indescribable as he asked, What the hell is this? Lin watched in horror as the parasite consumed the brains of the unsuspecting fish which swam around aimlessly. Turning to the mermaid goddess, he asked if he could eat those parasitic creatures. She casually replied that he could give it a try. Eager to experiment, Lin bit into one of the infected fish, but the parasite quickly escaped, wriggling free before his razor-sharp teeth could crush it. 
Frustrated, Lin couldn't believe something so small had eluded his grasp. These parasitic loaches clearly weren't native to this pond, yet they navigated the deep waters with impressive speed and near invisibility, skillfully avoiding the numerous deadly aquatic beasts lurking below. Despite the seemingly calm surface, every second in this environment was filled with tension, a sentiment even Lin couldn't escape. Besides the ever-present anxiety, the mermaid goddess sensed that the little koi was still preoccupied with retrieving the pocket watch that had sunk to the depths. Realizing the urgency, Lin knew he had to upgrade his equipment to retrieve it. Wasting no time, the koi darted into the school of Plekos to gather more points. Meanwhile, on a distant shoreline, a fishing boat had been cordoned off by police for mysterious reasons. Inside, one fisherman had suffered such a severe neck wound that it couldn't be shown on YouTube due to its brutality. Forensic experts were trying to unravel the incident on this seemingly ordinary fishing boat. The surviving fisherman, who had witnessed the attack, looked terrified, claiming that a loach had killed the crew. The officer, however, dismissed him as delusional, doubting that a simple loach could inflict such horrific injuries on a human. Treated as if he were insane, the fisherman grew increasingly frantic, insisting he wasn't lying and that the loach had bitten through his friend's neck and burrowed into the body. He had been too scared to call the police immediately. Additionally, he had mentioned that the entire crew was killed, but only one body was found on the boat. This raised the question, where were the other victims? Hearing this, the fisherman shuddered and became more erratic, reiterating that he had seen the loach kill everyone. He had warned the crew about the loach's ominous presence from the beginning, but they ignored him and brought it back. Now, he was consumed by despair, repeatedly stating that it was all over. Fortunately, one of the police officers recognized that the situation exceeded their expertise and called in the Dragon Unit. This team might offer the crucial answers they urgently sought. The Dragon Unit in question was under the leadership of a familiar figure. She was currently examining fish discovered on the fishing boat. Xiao Shui had anticipated the sight before her, only empty shells of marine life remained. She sternly questioned the surviving fishermen about the location of their catch, and he revealed they had ventured near the restricted coastline. Xiao Shui remained composed and inquired about the missing bodies of the other crew members. The police had found traces of their blood near a local lake. Nearby, team leader Luo began piecing the puzzle together. It appeared that the recent mutant creature explosion involved a mutant loach. This loach, filled with loach eggs, was merely another victim among many. Xiao Shui immediately called her team to report the significant issue. Mutant eggs had infiltrated the inland waters. They needed to coordinate a rescue operation in the sub-district. She requested to be taken to the river where the last signs of the human victims were detected. Meanwhile, in the shallow waters of the pond, Lin let out a weary burp as he continuously devoured fish. Miss Mermaid watched him lazily from the side, intrigued by his focus on pleco fish despite the abundance of choices in the pond. Lin aimed to eradicate these invasive species. He had consumed almost everything that posed a threat in the shallow water, leaving the harmless native species undisturbed. Additionally, his mission to eliminate pleco fish had earned him enough evolution points for another upgrade. He knew each evolution might grant a new skill. The last one he received was called Auspiciousness, which seemed related to Qi. While he was adjusting his status window, a notification for his quest refresh appeared. His regular mission still involved hunting pleco fish, but his special mission now required him to devour ten mutated creatures with a blue treasure chest as a reward. Given that it was early morning, he confirmed his theory that missions refresh daily. The goal of consuming ten mutant creatures seemed daunting, especially since there were few in the pond. He was convinced the parasitic loaches he encountered were meant for the sea, suggesting that someone or something had introduced these mutated parasites into the pond, possibly mingled with the plecos. Lin shook his head, dispelling any distracting thoughts. It was time to focus on the fruits of his labor. It was time to evolve once more. As he initiated the evolution process, a supernatural light emanating from his diamond gem began to envelop his body again. Lin Hao, the black koi, ascended to level 7. His body now measured 1.3 meters in length and weighed 6 pounds. His combat power surged to 7.7 .7 points. His passive ability, auspiciousness, could now slightly accelerate the evolution of nearby plants and animals. 
He also acquired the ability to camouflage when remaining still, effectively making him a water chameleon. Upon completing his evolution, various fish of different shapes, sizes and colors swam around him gracefully. This was likely a result of his enhanced divine power. The auspiciousness passive skill attracted nearby plants and animals by boosting their evolution speed. On the pond's surface, a little girl and her mother watched the colorful marine life dancing around a particular koi. The little girl was thrilled by the spectacle, but her mother reminded her that they needed to leave soon as the pond was about to be locked down. As the mother predicted, the sound of marching troops grew louder. The armed forces formed a barricade around the pond, firmly instructing all civilians to leave the area immediately. They quickly deployed underwater gadgets to survey the pond. Out of curiosity, Lin approached one of these strange high-tech devices. The pulsating signal from the sphere suggested it was a detection device. Approaching it turned out to be a mistake as the light turned red and a silent alarm activated on the surface. The computer receiving the transmission indicated the presence of a mutant creature. Consequently, Lin's own system started issuing warning messages. It was alarming to him that he had been detected. With the confirmation of a mutant creature in the pond, specialized forces equipped with diving gear were dispatched to investigate. They carried sharp harpoons for defense. In one corner of the pond, Lin's system was practically urging him to escape after being marked as a mutant creature. Every direction he looked was filled with glaring warnings. As he glanced upwards, he saw the silhouettes of the divers. Lin already knew the deep waters were fraught with unknown dangers. He didn't expect a threat from the surface as well. Faced with imminent danger, he decided to risk the deeper waters rather than confront the unknown human forces. The koi ventured into the perilous depths of the mysterious dragon pond. To his surprise, the depths were manageable with his current abilities. Times had changed, and he was no longer at the bottom of the food chain. The mermaid goddess reappeared, urging him to explore even further into the uncharted crevices, an idea Lin strongly opposed. As the embodiment of his system, couldn't the mermaid goddess prioritize his safety instead of constantly pushing him into danger? Relenting, the mermaid goddess advised Lin to find something to eat before delving deeper. However, when Lin saw the prey she indicated, he felt a chill despite being a fish. Who wouldn't be creeped out by a fish with multiple parasitic loaches attached to its head? Lin opted to utilize one of his newly honed skills, camouflage. This ability proved extremely useful, making it the ideal tool for ambushes. Up for the challenge, Lin tested this skill on a loach-infested fish. Unfazed by the sight of wriggling parasites, he took a substantial bite and consumed the entire head of the infected fish. He likened the sensation of eating the mutated loaches to that of slippery glass noodles. To his surprise, this single bite met the requirements for his special task of devouring ten mutant creatures in one go. He was astonished at how effortlessly he secured a blue treasure chest. The chest's contents remained unknown until the mermaid goddess opened it revealing a skill called Black Iron Scales. As the name suggests, this skill would render his scales as hard as black iron. The transformation was swift and striking. At last, Lin Hao, the black koi, acquired a color that matched his name. Bro gained the N-word pass. Although the transformation felt like all his scales were being plucked out, it wasn't painful, just itchy. This reward was a significant breakthrough, providing him with a skill that needed activation. Despite the initial exhaustion from his first transformation, this new scale armor greatly enhanced his self-preservation. However, Lin's confidence would soon be put to the test. A larger predator had been lurking in the shadows, monitoring his every move. Sensing the bloodlust behind him, Lin quickly turned his attention to the source, the gigantic mutant snake beast from the depths, an adversary he had unfinished business with. Their second encounter was imminent. The mutant snake initiated the battle with a terrifying lunge, moving at an incredible speed. Its jaw wide open, it aimed to swallow the little koi whole once again. As Lin retreated, his system alerted him that the opponent's combat power slightly surpassed his own. Abruptly, he halted his retreat and faced the enemy with a confident smile. The system hinted at a chance. With only a slight advantage in combat power, it was time to demonstrate who was truly in control. While the snake beast excelled at intimidation, Lin Hao remained steadfast in the face of its fearsome roars. 
Activating his black iron scales, Lin equipped himself with nearly indestructible armor. The snake beast lunged again, expecting an easy bite, but was met with a painful surprise as it clamped down on the tough scales. Its efforts only resulted in shattered fangs and severe gum wounds. This encounter affirmed Lin's upper hand. Energized, he prepared his counterattack, a powerful tail slam. The forceful blow caught the snake off guard, launching it deeper into the water. However, the resilient beast managed to stop its descent. Lin aimed to emphasize that beasts attack on instinct and don't learn from their mistakes, just like the snake, which prepared for yet another predictable lunge. This time, Lin chose to reverse the situation and bite the creature that had previously been preying on others. His sharpened, enhanced teeth were formidable, penetrating the monster's tough scales and flesh, causing it to bleed. As he anticipated the enemy's counterattack to force him to release his grip, the Koi summoned the power of the Black Iron Scales, armoring his body. He relished making the beast that once tried to devour him now struggle. This battle allowed him to showcase the results of his painstaking evolution. Recognizing that the small Koi was too formidable, the mutant snake attempted to flee. They began with Lin as the prey, but it seemed they would end with him as the predator. Lin relentlessly pursued and bit the mutant snake with all his might. The deeper his sharp teeth dug, the more agony the retreating beast experienced. With one final effort, Lin declared his intention to eliminate his rival. As the mutant snake bled profusely from multiple wounds, that intention seemed likely to be realized. Lin's biting force and determination tore off a large chunk of the snake's flesh, creating a deeper wound than before. Realizing that retreating and defending were futile, the beast tried to immobilize the koi with its tongue. However, Lin's upgraded scale, strengthening and powerful tail swing provided a forceful escape. This tail swing, unlike before, enveloped Lin's body with electrifying energy, launching a water vortex at the monster. The vortex wreaked havoc, wounding the snake in several critical areas. The sequence of attacks culminated in a final strike that pierced through the snake's body, reminiscent of their first encounter. This time, Lin wasn't breaking free to escape. He was intent on killing. As the snake fell to its death from multiple deep wounds, Lin's black iron scale armor dissipated. The system congratulated him for slaying the mutant red dot brocade snake. After the battle, the ground bore the marks of their fierce struggle, with craters stained in blood. Lin carefully chewed the flesh he had torn from the snake's body, feeling a sense of closure as he overcame the bitterness of past defeat and powerlessness. It was time to reclaim what was rightfully his. After feasting on the corpse of the mutant red dot brocade snake, Lin gained 500 evolution points, the highest reward he had ever received for a single kill. The mermaid goddess explained that this was the result of successfully challenging beyond his level. Aside from the points, there were also some unforeseen benefits. When Lin heard her mention this, his curiosity was immediately aroused. The talk of unexpected gains grabbed his attention. The mermaid goddess decided to forego further explanation, preferring Lin to discover the process himself. By invoking the power of the diamond gem embedded in his forehead, the mermaid goddess's system energy merged with Lin's core in a dazzling light display. In an instant, he vanished from the world of endless waters. The sensation was reminiscent of evolution. When Lin opened his eyes, he was astonished to find his vision had returned to its original human state. His fins were replaced by hands he thought he had lost forever. The koi fish was gone, leaving only Lin's incredibly muscular human form in the magical water world. He tested his hands, clenching them into fists, and found his mobility unimpaired. The sight of his normal limbs filled him with immense joy. He had missed his hands dearly. Who wouldn't in his situation? More importantly, his handsome and charming face had returned, replacing his scaly, fishy visage. Overcome with excitement, he began shaking the mermaid goddess enthusiastically. She had to calm him down, explaining that the transformation was only temporary. Suddenly, Lin's optimism waned. Receiving something so deeply desired, only to have it temporarily, was bittersweet. The mermaid goddess wanted him to understand the conditions of his human form completely. She reiterated that it was a temporary fix. At his core, he was still merely a low-level fish. Moreover, Lin could only speak with her as others wouldn't be able to hear his voice. He currently had no combat abilities, which was disappointing, but regaining his human appearance was what mattered most to him. 
Lin wanted to seize this limited opportunity to leave the water and head to the shore immediately. The mermaid goddess didn't object, but she warned that if he left the water as he was, he might be apprehended by the authorities for appearing as a naked stranger when someone spotted him. Fortunately, this problem wasn't insurmountable. Lin discreetly swam to the surface of the pond, careful not to draw attention. He remembered a seldom visited storage room near the shore. Using a lily pad for cover, he quietly broke the surface. He knew the storage contained unclaimed lost items. This was a significant find. The room could serve as his temporary dressing room. Using some algae as makeshift pants, he did his best to avoid detection by any prying eyes as he made his way to the storage room door. Once he was certain no one was observing the area, he sprinted to the door. Fortunately for him, the authorities overseeing this place didn't use locks. After sifting through the lost and found boxes, he located a relatively clean tracksuit. The only item he took to the surface was the retrieved locket. After addressing his lack of clothing, he picked up the valuable trinket from the table and exited the storage room. He also grabbed a cap he found lying around to stay inconspicuous since it was still daylight. As he ventured out, he began to realize that having not been on land for a while, he needed to adjust to walking on two legs instead of swimming with a tail and fins. To remind you, the perimeter of the dragon pond has been sealed off and armed forces are stationed there due to suspicions of mutant activity. Lin approached the restricted area and was immediately confronted by the authorities. They assumed he was a wandering tourist, unaware of the restricted zone. In his human form, he couldn't speak to other humans. This was one of the limitations imposed by his transformation system. One of Xiao Shui's loyal subordinates was tasked with organizing the operations around the pond. This subordinate had to handle phone calls for his boss, the head of the research team, Luo. Although Lino couldn't speak, he was certain he heard the name of the love of his life mentioned by that man. Defying the armed forces orders, Lino moved closer to the restricted area. The officers, in a panic, had to restrain him. The team leader's subordinate, a gruff captain, demanded the unknown visitor's identity and how he had entered the area. Lin had to rely on gestures to communicate due to his inability to speak. He pointed animatedly at the locket in his hands to convey his message. He simply offered it to the captain to explain the situation. The captain carefully took the trinket from his hands. Upon opening the locket, he saw the blurred photo of Lin and team leader Luo. He realized the locket must have belonged to his boss. The captain asked if the voiceless young man knew the leader, and Lin immediately nodded. The captain smiled, thanked him on behalf of team leader Luo, and then politely urged Lin to hurry home, mentioning that a secret mission was still ongoing at the pond. When a familiar voice, brimming with conviction, inquired about the progress of their clearing operation, the two men near the caution line responded very differently. The captain promptly checked on the status of team leader Luo's work on the west side of the city. Meanwhile, Lin tried to hide his face with his cap. He knew he couldn't confront Xiao Shue yet, he was unable to speak, and the dragon team was investigating mutant creatures. His most pressing concern was the unpredictable, limited duration of his human form. Thankfully, the captain was reliable. He gave the locket to his boss, explaining that it had been found by a young man who insisted it be returned to its owner. Xiao Shue was astonished to see the locket she thought was lost forever. She immediately demanded to know who had retrieved it. The captain, unaware of the deeper implications, pointed to the young man behind him, but Lin had already fled, fearing further complications. The captain assumed the young man was just a wandering tourist. Xiao Shui was content with having the pocket watch back and urged her subordinate to resume his work. However, team leader Luo harbored a suspicion that Lin had recovered the watch. She still clung to the hope that the love of her life was alive and her instincts were accurate. Lin escaped the restricted area and hid behind some dense bushes. From a distance, he silently apologized to Xiao Shui, knowing they couldn't meet yet. He promised to explain everything when the time was right. His decision to leave seemed justified as the system began flooding him with warnings that his human form was about to expire. Lin swiftly dived back into the water before the timer reached zero. The events unfolding were beyond his comprehension, whether as a human or a fish, he could no longer live aimlessly. 
he resolved to make the most of his brief time on the surface, recognizing that his potential for transformation was vast. Recalling the incident that led to his bizarre predicament, Lin determined to train and evolve properly. He needed to uncover the truth of what happened on that fateful day. A solitary skyscraper stood far from the pond, right in the heart of the city. This was the famed Longan Research Center. Inside one of the facility's most secure rooms, someone was on the brink of making a life-changing decision. Xiao Xue was submitting her application to become a full-time field agent, despite her superior's objections. She assured the man in the lab coat, whom she called Old Jung, that she had pondered this decision for a considerable time. However, her application included a request to inject herself with a high concentration of the GT virus, a procedure fraught with immense risks. Given Lufu's reputation as an expert researcher, there was no apparent need for her to take such a gamble, yet she viewed it differently. She wanted Old Jung to grasp that her transition to a full-time field agent would greatly benefit her research. Having worked with this determined woman for a long time, Old Jung understood her true motivation. He knew she wanted to venture into the anomaly sites to search for her missing lover, Lin Hao, but with the world facing a major crisis, this was hardly the time to let personal feelings interfere. They needed to stay focused and prioritize the situation. Lu Fu reassured Old Jung that her decision wasn't solely about Lin Hao. One of their persistent challenges was the research team's inability to reach anomalous scenes promptly, resulting in lost and missed critical information about mutant creatures. By joining the action team full-time, she believed she could drive new breakthroughs in their research on these strange phenomena. With a heavy heart, Old Jung sighed and approved her request, acknowledging the strength of her argument. Meanwhile, back at the pond, Lin was undergoing a similar life transition. With nothing new left to consume in the shallow waters, it was time for him to venture into the dark depths. The mermaid goddess questioned him about the gravity of this decision, warning him of the unknown creatures and the heightened dangers lurking in the deep waters. Lin responded by diving into the mouth of the dark cavern leading to the depths. Aware of the dangers, he was still determined to give it a try. After all, if he couldn't fight the threats, he could always retreat, right? At Hualong Pond, as oxygen bubbles rose to the surface, the deeper one descended, the darker it became. In these depths, larger, stronger and more terrifying monsters lurked. Amidst these creatures, our small friend tried his best to hide in the shadows while nibbling on small prey. Nearby, a relaxed mermaid asked him if he was not determined to explore the deep waters, why he was still hiding. He responded by calling it a tactical retreat, a method to explore safely, emphasizing working smarter, not harder. He then received a notification indicating that he had enough evolution points to evolve. When prompted to choose yes or no, he naturally chose yes. A blue light enveloped him, illuminating the water, and after a few moments, his evolution was complete. Overjoyed, he wondered if it was just his imagination or if the light had indeed just turned on. He felt that the darkness of the deep waters was no longer an issue as he could now see clearly in the dark. The mermaid explained that this was due to his new night vision ability. His status window displayed his details, name Lin Hao, race Black Koi, level 8, size 1.5 meters long, weight 101 pounds, combat power 10, skills including camouflage, fire scales, powerful bite, strong slap, iron scales, and a special ability called House Guardian Blessing Level 3, passive. He now had 13 evolution points out of 3,000 needed for his next evolution. He was congratulated for reaching level 8, and the map was unlocked for him. When asked if he wanted to use the map, he pressed yes, curious if the map could teleport him. A long scroll appeared before him, and upon closer inspection, he realized it was a map of Longyin City. The map primarily showed rivers, with the Hanshui River located about 5 kilometers north of the Dragon King Temple. He pointed to a spot on the map and mentioned that there was another location about 8 kilometers away, a river outside the Logian chemical plant. As he considered this, he thought to himself about the futility of knowing river locations while still being stuck in Hualongqi. However, his thoughts were interrupted when the system informed him that today's teleportation was activated and that it would take him one hour to reach the new location. It then asked if he wanted to teleport immediately. Upon reading this, he was astonished at the prospect of actually teleporting. 
Recognizing it as his only safe travel option and wanting to avoid further worry, he decided to try out the teleportation. Once he accepted, his body began to disappear gradually, transforming into pixels within seconds and transporting him to his chosen location on the map. Upon arrival, he was elated that the teleportation had worked. His smile was wide as he jumped up and down in the water with city buildings visible in the background. Laughing and swimming among harmless fish, he was thrilled to have discovered a new food source. Referring to it as a new dining table, he marveled at the abundance of fish around him. He quickly caught grass carps, which tasted far better than the scavenger fish he used to eat. He even headbutted another fish nearby, killing it and then eating it. While eating, he noticed a notification stating that he had devoured an adult grass carp, earning him 90 evolution points. Overjoyed, he realized this place was like heaven. The evolution points were significantly higher than those from scavenger fish, with 90 points equating to three scavenger fish. He reflected on his past life in Hua Long Chi, where he survived on apple snails and scavenger fish daily. He wondered how long it had been since he had enjoyed such fine food. Suddenly, a water snake swam nearby. He turned to look at it and felt a surge of anger, recalling his previous encounter with a gigantic monster water snake at his last location. His attention was then diverted to something else. Below him, a gigantic catfish was swimming. Lin was shocked and quite astonished to see the two-meter-long fish. What surprised him even more was the absence of any warning from the system, indicating that the catfish's combat power might be similar to his own, or possibly even weaker. He dismissed the thought and decided to go for it, reasoning that devouring the catfish would earn him significant evolution points, potentially allowing him to level up. Without wasting any more time, he dashed toward the fish, eager for a meal. However, when he tried to bite into its body, his teeth slid off its slippery skin instead. Puzzled by this, he suddenly got bitch-slapped in the face by the catfish's tail. Lin grinned, unfazed by the blow, which confirmed his suspicion that the fish's combat power wasn't very high. Using his fire scale's power, blue flames erupted from his body as he slammed into the fish with full force. The fish crashed to the ground, eyeing its attacker with an idea – to eat Lin. It managed to get Lin in its mouth, but Lin quickly escaped from the wide-open jaws. He then used his tail to bitch-slap the fish back in the face. Lin grinned, relishing the satisfaction of retaliation. Realizing it had no chance of winning, the catfish fled, or more accurately, swam for its life. Lin declared he wouldn't let it escape, but just then he received a notification from the system, informing him that his teleportation time limit had expired. He would be teleported back to Hua Long Chi in three seconds. Those three seconds felt like an eternity for Lin because in that moment, something caught his attention. Emerging from the water, he sensed a terrifying presence in the city. The atmosphere was filled with dread and he felt an indescribable force looming over the city. A realization struck him. This sensation was familiar. He remembered the day an enormous monster appeared in the city, destroyed everything and killed him when he was still human. With just one second left, he screamed, Is this really it? Long Yin City is in danger! Unable to act, he was transported back to his previous location, far from the city. If you've made it this far, please step forward and press the button. Ah! Now, open your eyes. Step forward and push the button. <laughs> yes! You see? What a thrill! What a rush! That was you! Now, I want you to do something else for me. Please press the subscribe button. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe commenting let him cook will lend you an air of charisma as well? Lin shouted for the teleportation to stop so he could understand what was going on, but because he wasn't important in the system, it didn't listen and sent him back. As he touched the fin on his chin, he wondered why that disgusting thing seemed so familiar. The mermaid suggested he return and investigate more. Shocked, Lin pointed to himself and asked how he could do that. She gave him two options. 
Either wait there until the teleportation was ready again the next day and hope to find it, or start walking right away. With his speed, he would turn back into a little koi fish upon reaching the cold water river five kilometers away and have to wait there until the next day to return. With no other choice and time running out, he decided to swim to the surface. There, he noticed some people relaxing near the water. One individual remarked that he knew his friend had submitted the application and asked when he would leave. It turned out the speakers were Lin's girlfriend and her right-hand man. Lin heard them say that she had almost finished handing over her duties and would leave the next day. Lin wondered inwardly where Xiao Xue was going. The man mentioned that from the day old Zhang brought her into the dragon team, she was never content just dissecting mutated creatures in the lab. She explained that she was thrilled when a national-level research unit invited her to join. Upon seeing the words, Hua Xia Dragon Team, she felt a strong sense of purpose. However, the more secrets she uncovered, the harder it was to maintain her original intentions. The man acknowledged that everything has two sides. He continued, noting that mutated creatures pose a significant threat to public safety, but the GT virus they carry isn't entirely useless. She agreed, saying the action team members had all been injected with small amounts of the GT virus to enhance their physical strength and combat abilities. To surpass the limits, one can only opt for injecting a high concentration of the GT virus. The man placed his hand on her shoulder, called her by name, and as he left, he told her she was the true warrior. He didn't elaborate much, only expressing his hope that she would return safely. In response, she assured him she would, knowing someone would be waiting for her, specifically her boyfriend, Lin. After hearing this, Lin returned to the water while Xiao Xue hoped everything would proceed smoothly. That night, it was dark when he emerged from the water and hid behind a tree to transform back into his human form. Inwardly, he thought about Xiao Xue joining the dragon team to secretly research mutated creatures. As he ran, he contemplated the dangerous mission she was embarking on. He paused, wondering if he too carried the GT virus, given that mutated creatures did. Suddenly, the mermaid, who served as his system, appeared and reminded him that his human form only lasted 40 minutes, urging him to hurry. After running for several minutes, he reached the water, huffing and puffing, remarking that it had been a long time since he had run this much on land, almost feeling like his old human self. However, knowing dreams must end, he jumped back into the water, transforming back into his fish form. He found it absurd, but felt more comfortable in the water. He began eating some fish, receiving notifications that he had devoured an adult crucian carp, an adult grass carp, and a juvenile crucian carp, with each giving him 90 evolution points, except the juvenile, which gave him only 20 points. He didn't stop and continued his feast, eating a freshwater snail that provided just five evolution points. Despite this, he was overjoyed, his eyes beaming as if he were at an all-you-can-eat buffet. As he descended further, he noted the absence of schools of fish nearby, suspecting the presence of a larger predator. He continued, remarking that the murky water indicated something was amiss. His intuition proved correct when a catfish twice his size, with its mouth wide open, approached him from below, ready to swallow him. Fortunately, his quick reflexes allowed him to dodge its jaws, which snapped shut abruptly. However, as he evaded the attack, he sensed something odd about the fish. Its aura and demeanor were different. It seemed far more aggressive than before. As the catfish lunged at him again, Lin grinned and cursed, realizing it harbored a grudge and had planned an ambush. Knowing he needed to act quickly, as he had just seen a disgusting monster nearby, he dashed toward the catfish with maximum speed, his skin hardened and blue flames emanating from him. As he closed in, he bitch-slapped the catfish's face with his tail. The blow left the catfish confused and weakened, giving Lin an opening to attack its stomach. Acting like a true predator, Lin's teeth and bite grew stronger, allowing him to penetrate the slippery skin of the catfish. He noticed that its slimy skin was drying up, making his bites more effective. 
Seizing the opportunity, he tore off a large chunk of its body, causing the catfish to scream in pain and anger. The catfish was furious, but Lin, on the other hand, was relishing its meat, finding it delicious. After finishing his meal, he remarked that without the slime, it would have been easier to eat, but it was still strange. The fish hadn't been aggressive earlier, but suddenly became very competitive, leaving him puzzled. With the fish now dead, he began eating while wondering how many evolution points he would earn. He exclaimed how tasty the fish was and thought he should start cooking his food before eating in the future. A few minutes later, the once meaty fish was reduced to bones, while Lin's stomach swelled as if he were nine months pregnant. Then, he received a notification saying he had devoured a mutated catfish and earned 3,000 evolution points. Shocked, he jumped up, eyes wide open, shouting, Holy crap! 3,000! Another notification displayed his status window. Name, Lin Hao, species, fire-scaled black koi, level 9. He measured 1.8 meters long, weighed 151 pounds, and had a combat power of 14. His skills included camouflage, fire scales, powerful bite, powerful tail slap, aka bitch slap, and iron scales. His abilities included guardian blessing level 3, and he now had 7715 evolution points out of the 4000 needed to evolve. He was elated to have completed his task. Suddenly, he heard voices planning to electrocute some fish they had spotted. Lin emerged from the water and saw three men on the shore. One instructed the others to quickly use the net, while another announced he would handle the electrofishing. Lin thought about how despicable this illegal method of fishing was. One of the men pointed at the water and urged his companions to look quickly, exclaiming there was a big fish there. The fish they were talking about suddenly leapt into the water and then jumped out with its mouth wide open, revealing sharp teeth and a menacing expression. Lin's appearance was so terrifying that it caused them to wet their pants in fear and they ran for their lives, calling for their mothers. Pleased with how he had handled the situation, Lin returned to the water. However, the mermaid warned him that he was now in danger because those men would definitely report him to the dragon team, who would surely target him. This revelation shocked Lin, as he realized the seriousness of his mistake. At a police station, the lights were still on, indicating some officers were still working. Inside, the three men from earlier sat in front of two officers, recounting their encounter. The officers, however, seemed skeptical. One of the men insisted that they didn't understand. He explained that the fish in the cold water river had jumped up and was bigger than him. The officers listened, trying to hold in their laughter. It was clear they didn't believe the men, but one officer encouraged them to continue, while the other asked if they were certain about what they saw and if they had been drinking that night. One of the men assured them they were out fishing and completely sober, and the other two agreed. After hearing this, the officer pointed out that the cold water river was in a closed fishing season and questioned if they were really fishing there. This realization terrified the three men as they knew they had been fishing illegally. Caught in the act, the men quickly stood up from their seats. One of them suddenly remembered he had something to do, while another claimed he might have been mistaken and denied seeing the fish. The third man apologized for any trouble caused and agreed with the others. They then hurriedly left the room, closing the door gently behind them. One officer sighed, noting that these were just fishermen not following the rules. The other officer discussed the man's description of a fish larger than a person in a cold water river. He didn't necessarily think they were lying. Given a secret document they received a few days ago, he suggested they report it thinking it's better to be safe than sorry since things hadn't been peaceful lately. Meanwhile, back in the deep waters, Lin and his system were active. Lin looked frustrated, mentioning that they had searched all night without finding any trace of the monster. The scent was still there, so it couldn't have disappeared. The mermaid commented on his persistence. Lin checked his status window and remembered there was a task reward. He noted that the panel looked impressive, making it quicker to level up with plenty of food available. He checked his quest window again, 
showing that he had successfully devoured 100 out of 100 grass carps and 100 out of 100 crucian carps, completing all his tasks. It asked if he wanted to claim his reward now. Lin was happy to have finished the task and credited his success to the electrocuted fish from the previous night, which he had eaten while apologizing for their miserable fate, despite finding them tasty. He received a notification indicating that he had met the conditions for evolution. Upon accepting to evolve, a bright light surrounded him, illuminating the entire underwater area. The system then commented on his top-tier talent. After a few seconds, his evolution was complete, and the mermaid informed him that he had reached level 10. Excitedly, he shouted to open the chest. Inside, he found several upgrade options to choose from. Increased speed, enhanced constitution, reinforced tail fin, sharp saw teeth, increased stamina, improved defense, double devouring, increased strength, and one that caught his eye. Sharp horn. He examined the sharp horn option and wondered about its effects. The system asked if he wanted to use it now and he agreed. Suddenly, the gem on his forehead began to glow, causing him significant pain and itching, making him wonder if he was growing a brain. However, a golden horn started to emerge from the gem, and his evolution was complete, giving him a new golden appearance. He now looked like a dignified koi, though he found it strange to grow a horn since he wasn't a unicorn. The horn seemed quite sharp, and he realized that with a speed boost, it could create a strong impact. He was thrilled with this new ability and planned to test the horn's power in the cold water river tomorrow. Like, comment, let him cook, and subscribe if you want the next part, or enjoyed this story. Thank you.